What's up, guys, and welcome back to Beyond the Void Horror Podcast. My name is Alex, and today we're going to be doing a spoiler-free review and an unboxing of the new 4K, 4-disc, collector's edition of The Mist. And it's got a copy of a black and white one. So let's check it out. First up, I want to say this has been donated to the podcast and the YouTube here. We do both. We do audio podcast every Monday. If you're not listening to that, shame on you. Check it out. But this is a gift that was given to me to do on either one. And I chose to do it on YouTube since we've done it on the podcast. This was given and donated by Resolution. You'll be hearing that name quite a bit here in the future because, yeah, if you saw my haul, you kind of know. Dude, you rock. Thank you, man. This is one of my favorite movies, and I can't wait to talk about this whole disc set. We'll talk about what I think about the movie, what I thought of it in black and white, and then I'll get into the ingredients of this and uh, tell you where you can pick it up. So first up, I am a fan of the Miss story, and it was first put into a short story that was put into the Skeleton Crew, which I have two versions of this book. Uh, this is the sort of the author's one where they like you get the book club one which i thought these were the original editions and i was like oh my god this is like seven thousand dollars it wasn't like 25 <laughs> maybe 40 but still i you know we have all of the books and then i also have like a horror like a paperback version of this as well that was given to me and let me tell you when i read that story many years ago i was entranced by the story that stephen king wrote about this town being suffocated by a mist that comes up rolling out of the mountains and out of the fucking lake and starts causing a chaos in the streets. It's pretty wild. There's a scene in this book that I vividly remembered and built in my mind. You know when you're reading a book and then you just start thinking it's just really got you in there and then you watch the remake and it's like nothing like it. Well, that didn't happen with me in this movie. The Mist kicks ass. And I really, really like it. There are some complaints to be had, and we'll go over those. But yeah, this is definitely a movie that I really enjoy. So what is it all about? Well, it's essentially about this father who's an artist who is married, has a kid. And one night there's a storm that comes rolling in, destroys everything in the neighborhood, including the trees and everything are knocked down. And they are about to just get their bearings together and just like get their feet on the ground and start repairing everything. They go into town, the father, the son and the neighbor whose tree falls on their boathouse, which is pretty fun. And they go to the supermarket and soon a fog comes rolling in and they can't go anywhere. They can't see. They don't know how to get through. The people that do come in are talking about creatures coming out of the fucking white mist and killing them and just barely getting away. And it's a lot of tension. And one of the things I love in a story like this is that sort of disaster porn rush. And what I mean is disaster porn movies tend to do this rush, you know, where there's this disaster thing happens in the beginning, much like a zombie apocalypse where it kicks off and everything's like this big rush. That vibe is in this movie and it, it's a little bit more on a smaller scale, but they do a really good job of making a smaller movie look big and showing the disaster as big as it is using your imagination which you know Stephen King really hammers on but yeah this just came out a couple of weeks ago I watched it immediately because it's one of my favorite movies and I was like oh I'm just gonna pop it in for 20 minutes and then I uh yeah kept watching <laughs> And then when I was done watching, I actually popped on the black and white version to see what the ending was like, the last 20 minutes of it, to see how it felt. It's actually pretty cool in black and white, where, you know, there's a lot of CGI in this movie for the creature effects and stuff like that, because we're talking about a Lovecraftian story where some sort of event happens that causes this mist to happen, that all these creatures come from another dimension into this world, and they start killing people. And yeah, you're going to need a little CGI for some of the stuff 
that they do in this movie. But even for 2007, when this came out, it's actually not that bad looking. It's some of the more top-notch stuff. Is it perfect? No. But they did what they could with this movie, and what I've loved to see practical, sure. Are there moments in the film maybe a little bit? Yeah, but not a lot. I think it's mostly with the gore and like, you know, like the stuff that they can kind of focus on the creature work, you know, is a little bit harder, but they, I'm sure did some stuff with that, uh, practical as well, but mostly we're talking CGI. The black and white actually covers a lot of those mistakes. It kind of blends it in really nice. And there's these like, sort of like gradient tones that, uh, you know, kind of appear that you wouldn't notice if it was just color. Now I prefer the color version but it is not bad to watch in black and white and you get both discs in 4k and the blu-ray versions of that so but yeah there's you know a lot of creatures there's a lot of gore there's a lot of tension there's a lot of really great characters there's an a fantastic cast in this movie a cast by the way that was actually in the walking dead because as you know frank darabont was the producer on the first season and then shit got fucked up i'll let him tell you that story but there's a lot of cast in this movie that went on to work in the walking dead and are now big and famous because of it but we got thomas jane from Punisher fame, we got Marcia Gay Harden, who has an amazing role as Mrs. Carmendy in this movie. We got Laurie Holden in The Walking Dead, as well as a, a ton of other names, including William Sadler, Toby Jones, you know, Chris Owen, the dorky kid that was in all those kids movies all the time. Melissa McBride, who went on to take on The Walking Dead for even longer than the uh, the Holden did. So, I mean, it's pretty cool. Like, I really think they did a lot of jobs. And one of the things that's great about having great characters is when they start killing each other and going crazy because they don't know what to do. And they're kind of attacking each other to try to figure out dominance over the situation because they're scared for their lives that extra tension really adds to this movie and makes it a whole nother layer it's another part of that disaster as we've learned in real life recently people don't really get along in apocalyptic situations or we need to help each other out and as much as i like to believe that mostly people are good boy this does not paint a pretty picture of some of those folks about half <laughs> but yeah, there's a scene in particular where this character, Mrs. Carmody, turns to God and there's nobody to really question or stop her. And she starts sort of spreading this sort of indoctrination to a lot of the people because they're scared. And it, man, does it mirror kind of today's world in a lot of ways and is so far ahead of itself in how to realize what these people are like. But, you know, it's that constant trope, you know, like, what do you do when you turn to fear? You either fall apart, turn to God or, you know, try to figure out something. And this does a really good job of putting these characters into different various spots and to do some pretty bad things. But yeah, the ending of this movie, holy shit. Stephen King even said this was one of the best endings and he wished he would have written it. And then that just shows you just how much Frank Darabont does for this particular movie. He does it really well. While there are some things to gripe about in this movie, mostly some of the CGI and things, it's a lot of fun. It's a it's a movie that is going to fulfill that audience that loves the Lovecraft and those beyond the void kind of guys like myself who uh, named their podcast after that kind of stuff. Doorway horror, as I like to call it. But yeah, it's pretty awesome. I really love this movie a lot. And I would probably give this like an 8.5. There's a lot of violence, a lot of realism. There's a lot of creatures and suspense and like really cool little situations that these people get themselves into. It's like one large bite after another of some really fun stuff that happens along the way. And man, I would love, <laughs> God, I wish there was like a another story of the mist in some way, like written from another character perspective, like in another place in another town nearby or something like that or just another story because i just love this story so but yeah i'm sure it wouldn't be nearly as good as this but you know i'm a fan of it it isn't perfect but i still love it quite a bit and i you know there's not many films that really do as well as this did this is one of the better stephen king adaptations in my personal opinion i don't know where it stands but it's definitely up there now i'm gonna get into some of the ingredients on this so let me move the camera over a little bit uh, i'll have some b-roll to let you see it a little bit up close so don't worry uh first of all you get the slip cover here which is you know pretty nice i like the cover the 
design artwork is really cool. Definitely very Lovecraftian vibes here. Gives you a little bit of a taste of what big things are lurking in the mist. You got a pretty big case here, although it's, you know, probably about the size of like a steel book or something, you know, because it's just extra thick and a little heavier. Show you the back here. You'll see the B-roll here. There are some extras and things on the Blu-ray discs, but you get, get a book here. And uh, your first one is the 4K right here. It has some of the commentaries on it, but it is sans a lot of the special features. And then you got the black and white version right here too. So if you're looking to watch it in black and white, you pop that one in. Uh, and then they even have the subsequent Blu-ray and black and white Blu-ray. All the extras are on the Blu-ray, so I think both of them have it. I don't think the <laughs> extras are in black and white, although I guess I should have checked, but I'm assuming that they are not. But yeah, there are some cool things in here. I'll read a few things on there. I'm not going to go over everything because there's like two hours plus of extra footage in there on the Blu-rays, so you can uh, kind of get a fill of uh, some of uh, Stephen King, Frank Darabont, and everybody in this movie. But they get the audio commentary with writer-director Frank Darabont and producer Denise Uff, who are on both the 4K discs, by the way, and the Blu-ray. You also get, on the Blu-ray only, you get the deleted scenes with optional commentary by Frank Darabont himself, who wrote and directed this movie. You also get a conversation with Stephen King and Frank Darabont about the movie and the writings. It's pretty awesome. And then, of course, you get all the extra hours of footage. The aspect ratio on this one is 185.1, which is one of my favorite ones because it covers most of the screen the movie is about two hours and four minutes or six minutes there's a lot of really great stuff in here i think this is a pretty much the definitive version of the mist so if you have not picked this up yet and it gives you another reason to watch it sooner too because you get the black and white version so yeah maybe you won't watch them back to back but if you ever have a hankering and you're talking to a friend invite some people over hey you want to watch the mist in 4k but in black and white sure man let's do it you know whatever you know it's like an excuse to watch this movie one more time oh no <laughs> but anyway yeah it's about 26 bucks right now and i think that's a fantastic price i got this from resolution thank you so much for giving this to me i think this is a really good release this is high high marks the picture quality is fantastic and all the extras in here yeah they may not be all new but they're damn good and it's this is the one that you want if you're gonna look for fidelity so and yes of course it is in high dynamic range some some discs aren't but most of them are but yeah thanks again buddy thank you so much for donating to the podcast if you guys have something that you'd like to donate i just fixed something on my amazon so that you know if there is something that you want me to to watch you can add it to your cart now and we also have a list of our own things but if for some reason you have trouble adding anything that you want extra that's not on my list to the cart just tell me and I'll add it to the, the list and we'll do a review for you either on the podcast or on here. Give you a shout out. So, you know, I'm just really grateful to have so many cool people who love this shit as much as I do. All of you guys have been so supportive. Thank you for liking, subscribing, doing the little bell notification. <laughs> but yeah, I really appreciate you guys. Thanks for coming by. And as always, long live the void. void.